All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Simpkins Physics Closet. It's Mr. Simpkins doing physics in a closet. Uh, over here, we have our report for today. And if you can use some helpers here with what you're seeing. On the spring track, you can see that we have a spring at the end. And if I pull this lever, boing, the spring pushes out. I've put some marks of tape here so you can see where the spring is relaxed. The plunger is even with this piece of tape. And when I pull it back, the spring is tight when the plunger is even with this piece of tape. Now, if you look at your notes, this is what we call X, the spring at compression distance. And if I put this as close as I can to the camera, we can measure that spring compression distance with my worn out meter stick. So uh, since it's a little worn out, I'm going to start at 10 here. And you notice the distance that I pull the spring back, boing, as it comes back to rest here again, is goes from 10 centimeters. And we're going to try to be as precise as possible here. So it's 1, 2, there's 0 0.5678. We'll call that 2.8 centimeters. All right, we'll call that 2.8 centimeters. So that's the X, the spring compression distance for how far back we pull the spring each time. Now, based on what we already know, we know that when there is a force applied over a distance, F times D, what does that mean? That means we're doing, means we're doing work. And when work is done, energy changes. So the work that I just did, I used energy stored in my body to do work on the spring. That spring now has elastic potential energy. And if I put a ball in front of this and then I release that spring and let it go, it's going to give the energy to the ball. And so there's two ways to do this lab. This is the introductory piece. So whether you're doing, um, whether you're doing kinetic or potential, uh, in both cases, you're going to use that as your X. You're going to use that as your spring compression distance.